So hi, my name is Josh, Josh Long. Uh, important information about me, that's my email. Please take that down. If you have questions while we're talking and uh, you want to ask them, please be my guest. Uh, I'm happy to answer them. But if you feel like you want recourse, you want some way of getting an answer, maybe you leave this room more confused than when you came in, that's not uncommon in my talks. So, you know, <laughs> take, take, take down my email. A uh, little bit about me, wrote, what is it now, four books, working on my fifth book. I'm a spring source guy, you know, but I'm working t these days a lot with Cloud Foundry as well, so the book I'm working on is Cloud Foundry in Action. Um, I also put together a roundup every Tuesday on springsource.org with sorts of like content you can follow if you're interested in spring and that kind of stuff. I'm also the single largest co contributor and committer to many of the bugs in these fine projects, for example, spring integration and spring batch and spring Hadoop and so, and so on. Um, all right, so quick show of hands. How many of you have heard of Cloud Foundry? Okay, you're in the right room. Welcome. Um, we're going to kind of take a walking tour of Cloud Foundry today very quickly. We have so very little time and so much to talk about. Uh, first things first, if you want to get started with Cloud Foundry and if you have a laptop in the audience and want to follow along at home, uh, please be my guest. This is the register page. You go to cloudfoundry.com forward slash sign up and then just put your email information in there and eventually you'll get an email saying you're welcome. Uh, if you put in that code, CF Open Tour 2012, uh, it'll expedite the processing. So if you enter your information and sign up and you want to get it started really quickly, this will put you at the front of the line, right? Because we have uh, some sort of, we have a little bit of queuing involved. Okay. Once you have Cloud Foundry, there's lots of ways to consume it. What we're going to look at today uh, are the VMC command line tool, which is the command line client that you're going to use to actually talk to the cloud. Uh, you, you can use Maven if you like. There's a Maven plugin. There's a Grails uh, add-on plugin. There's a Spring Source tool suite integration for Eclipse, basically, which is what we're going to look at as well today. Uh, and there's also Spring Root, which you can use if you want. There's an add-on there. So lots of different ways to get the job done. Um, one thing that typically, pff, I'm not going to say scares, but it maybe makes them a little woozy is uh, VMC itself, the command line tool, is written in Ruby. And in order to get Ruby installed, you need to, you need to do a little bit of sorcery, witchcraft, I don't know, just awful stuff. So on Windows, it looks like this. You just get the Ruby installer, uh, download it, and install it. I recommend 192P290, um, <laughs> specifically. Don't, don't get the 193 if you can help it, and definitely, definitely don't get 1.87. Get the 192. Once you've got that installed, just do gem space install space VMC. This is going to give you the VMC command line client. It's using the package manager built into Ruby to achieve that. Once you have that, you can move forward. On OS 10, and by the way, I, every time I say this, it bothers me, uh, but it's true. On OS 10, it's more difficult to set up Ruby than on Windows. <laughs> so uh, you need to use what's called uh, RVM. And RVM is basically like isolation. It's environments for your Ruby installation. So you can run concurrent Ruby installations on the same operating system. You can just switch between profiles. Uh, so here's that script. I'm not going to re reiterate it. And you, you needn't bother taking it down. Just go to beginrescuein.com, and you can get the script there. Once you've got that, just do RVM install 192, uh, and then RVM use 192, and then gem install VMC. And then, of course, on Linux, it just works, which, again, Things I thought I'd never say, but yeah, totally. Um, on, OK, we've got the basic bits out of the way. We, we understand how to get it installed. I just wanted to get that out of the way just to make sure we're all on the same page. Let's actually take a look at what Cloud Foundry is. Uh, when we talk about Cloud Foundry, we, we typically talk about three different pieces. We talk about the triangle here. Uh, we talk about the choices of frameworks, the choices of clouds, and the choices of services available to the average developer. Let's focus first, if you will, on uh, frameworks. When we talk about Cloud Foundry, remember, it's, it's a platform as a service uh, for running applications, right? The idea is that it brings the, the level of work, the unit of currency in the, in, the, in the application development process to you, the developers. It's not about operations. So of course, the concept of supported application types is a very important concept, right? So out of the box, we support Java, which in turn brings you uh, everything that you can deploy inside of a WAR file on Tomcat. Right, so Spring's a natural there. Scala support, Lyft and Play, for example, are well supported on Cloud Foundry. Uh, Ruby, Ruby, uh, 
can imagine there's not a lot of Ruby developers in the room, but you never know. Sometimes you go to conferences and you talk about Ruby and people throw their underwear on stage. You know, they love it. I don't know. Uh, Node.js, there are those people out there as well. Um, and of course, if you don't like what we've got out of the box in the source code, then you can use the supported frameworks and supported uh, runtimes provided by ecosystem partners. And we'll look a, a bit at that in a minute. But uh, uh, we have good support. Actually, we have two good implementations of .NET support on Cloud Foundry. Two different companies working to support .NET. Uh, we have Python support from both AppFog and uh, Staccato. Staccato, of course, being the platform as a service from ActiveState, the company that makes the popular Perl, Python, you know, TCL uh, IDEs and tooling. And we have uh, PHP support from AppFog. We've also got, uh, an admittedly, more niche <laughs> uh, enthusiast uh, ports of support, for example, for Haskell and Erlang. Um, so yeah, lots of choices. And if you don't see what you want on there, there's probably, in all likelihood, a, a, an implementation available for you out there somewhere. When we talk about cho the clouds, we also talk about choice of runtimes, right? So for example, a um, very important part of what we're talking about when we talk about Cloud Foundry uh, is avoiding lock-in, right? How, this is the only song from the Eagles I think that everybody in the whole world knows. I'm pretty sure whenever I go, every country I go to, worldwide, Asia, Europe, North America, South America, etc., they they get this song, um, "Hotel California." Do you guys know that song? See, it proves a point. It makes a very so. Former VMware uh, CEO Paul Moritz likes to talk about the Hotel California syndrome, right? Uh, he doesn't. He talks about proprietary clouds as being hotels into which you can check in, but you can never leave. Right? We don't want that. We want this cloud to be something you can check out of. You know? It's a lovely place, after all. Um, and so to drive home the point, I like to talk about this particular example. This, my friends, is a uh, Google Apps uh, ticket, you know, and a bug tracking ticket for Google App Engine that was lodged uh, you know, April 8th, 2008. And 3,000 3, people, 3, people visited this ticket over the course of the years and said, I would like PHP support, plus one, man, or before plus one. What did, what did they do before plus one? They had some other thing. Where they, it was probably plus one. That's probably what happened. They had a way of saying, I, wanna, I want PHP support. I would pay money for PHP support. I would pay money that costs lots and lots of money for PHP support. If you just please add it. Uh, and this went on for, for, <laughs> for years until finally, in January of last year, uh, a Googler uh, came to the ticket and basically did the, the bug ticket equivalent of, shut up, and he closed all the, all the uh, requests. Just said no, nine, no, you know, not going to do it. Um, so it took almost four years for them to say no, right? Uh, and, you know, that's, that's fine. It's their prerogative, I guess. But what really kind of bugs me about that whole thing was, uh, <laughs> look what they added in the interim, right? I mean, they added Python support out of the box. That's fine. I'm a fan. Uh, and then they added this kind of mutant zombie wonky version of, of Java, which doesn't actually behave like Java for most applications. Fine. Uh, but, then, but, then, but then they added Go support. Is there a deluge of people using Go that I don't know about? Is this the new thing? Have, are people going home and programming Go applications in their spare time because it's the new hot sexiness? I mean, they added Go. There's, uh, they had to go instead of PHP, guys. This is a problem. I mean, how many, just by show of hands, how many of you guys know somebody who knew somebody who once fell over and tripped and fell and hit somebody who knew PHP? Somebody? They're out there, right? You can't escape them. They're probably more than, than Go developers, at least. I don't know. Anyway, it just bugs me. Um, erstwhile, last year, uh, Cloud Foundry, the open source platform as a service from VMware, <coughs> got that in. Uh, was released last year of April, last year of March, maybe. And about a week or two later, a pull request, uh, somebody voting with her feet, yes, a pull request for PHP support was uh, created against the project. So here it is, right? We've got the initial seed of PHP support within two weeks of the project becoming available. That, then, that, same, that very same seed uh, is now actually the foundation of a whole business, right? I was telling you about, excuse me, I was telling you about AppFog, this company that has PHP support. That's them. That's their you know, business right there, is a pull request. 
Uh, and so now you actually have a very good, reliable option based on uh, this stuff. Um, so yeah, AppFog, good stuff. Lots of PHP support. We have uh, Joint, which is a company that supports and sponsors Node.js. They're actively supporting Node.js on Cloud Foundry. Uh, Active State, I mean, you know, other, this, this slide gets uh, progressively more out of date as time continues, right? Because we are, we're actually, actually adding new ecosystem partners all the time, so check your local listings. Um, another important bit about cloud portability, what we talk about, is uh, the ability to run your, your, your cloud, uh, you know, on, on micro cloud, right? We have this virtual machine you can get. It's a complete working replication of production. So it's a virtual machine you can download for free from micro.cloudfoundry.com. You can run it, um, you know, you, the official way is to run it on VMware, VMware's uh, player, TM. Uh, but I've heard tell that it's possible to do it without it if you're, you know, not so inclined. I don't know. Uh, VMware player itself is free on Linux and on Windows, and Fusion is uh, available for a nominal fee on OS X. If you... Uh, Really have a problem with the nominal fee bit, please just feel free to, feel free to reach out to me, josh.long at springsource.com, and I'll do my best to hook it up. All right. Um, OK, so that's the Micro Cloud Foundry, complete working instance of, of uh, the Cloud Foundry environment. You can deploy applications to it uh, and understand and, and you know, have no fear that what you've deployed there will behave identically in production. Right? It's very convenient. You can develop offline. You can be on a train, a plane, an automobile, uh, and develop against it, no problem. We also have, uh, again, because the code is open source, a huge part of what we're talking about, a huge part of what a lot of people love about Cloud Foundry, uh, is that they can run it in their own environment, their own data center, right? This is a very, very, this has a lot of powerful impl implications. A lot of people would love the elasticity, the dynamicism uh, of a platform as a service. They just don't want to have to, you know, host it on somebody else's cloud for regulatory reasons, perhaps. It's very typical in North America and in uh, Europe, of course, to have government uh, sanctions and so on, government uh, re regulations that require you to uh, conform to certain audits and security measures. So for example, um, in North America, we, in, in, in the US in particular, we have Sarbanes-Oxley, which requires that all data relating to publicly traded money be auditable, and this makes it uh, tenuous to host applications in a publicly hosted cloud, for example. So being able to run it in your own data center is a big deal. And um, there's a project we have called Bosch, which uh, I'm not going to lie to you, it's not for the faint of heart, but it is open source, and it's available on github.com forward slash Cloud Foundry. And you use Bosch to deploy Cloud Foundry into your own data center. So if you want to run this thing you know, locally and be able to take advantage of it behind the firewall in your own data center, that's fine. OK, and finally, services, right? This is my favorite part. This is the, the uh, sort of the creme de la creme of most applications. Very existential question. If you write an application and it does not write to any database or to any other output format, did it really get written? Really? Did you really write an application? Deep philosophy question. Um, so yeah, we have lots of services out of the box. Services are generally the, it's the appellation we use for you know, infrastructure bits, middleware, right? So databases and message queues and such, right? And of course, the ones we had at the have out of the box, RabbitMQ, MongoDB, Postgres, Redis, uh, MySQL, etc. those are uh, very, very powerful in of themselves. But if you use a different community ecosystem partner's version of the services, you'll see that they have support specific to, to their ecosystem implementation. So for example, on the .NET guys is versions of the Cloud Foundry, you'll find support for SQL Server and so on, right? Makes a lot of sense. Now, the nice thing about a cloud and the nice thing about these particular services uh, is that they give you the ability to experiment, right? To take a little, take some risks because you have really very little to risk. Uh, they give you the ability to, you know, try stuff out. Go ahead and you want to you want to add a fast, uh, you know, key value store to your uh, to your application or maybe a, a cache. Just start up Redis and use it. You don't have to worry about installing it and getting it secured and teaching operations how to manage it and deploy it and all that stuff. Just go. Just go. Um, how many of you have heard of Redis or are using it? Oh, guys. There are some amazing, I mean, there's some, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to toot its own horn or anything, but, but there's some small organizations out there that are using it really successfully, some fine mom and pop type establishments. Maybe you've heard of Stack Overflow. 
few hundred million requests per day, they're using Redis to cache. Small, small kind of stuff, you know? Um, you can do a lot, I think, with them, something like that. And, and RabbitMQ, again, the most widely used, uh, most widely deployed message queue uh, in all cloud environments, not just Cloud Foundry. Uh, and of course, MongoDB, and MySQL, and Postgres, and so on. Very, very powerful technologies, and it's just nice to be able to pull them down at a, at a moment's notice and get started with them, right? Makes, it's like shopping. You just say, I need this, 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 and this, and just throw it in the shopping cart and go. Um, and then finally, we have something called, oh, and this part bugs me too. This is called Caldecott. Uh, this is a tunnel. <laughs> See, because of that tunnel, it's a tunnel. Get it? Because of the tunnel in San Francisco, which I'm sure you guys all knew about. It's called Caldecott. Uh, it's a tunnel that lets you punch a hole from your local machine to your services deployed in the cloud. So for example, if you want to log into MySQL or to Postgres and actually add information into it, um, how are you going to do that? Right? Well, you use our tunnel, our proxy. It's called Caldecott. And, uh, that's great. It, it answers a very, very important uh, question, which is, you know, fine, you, the, you and I as developers, we've gotten our application deployed, but what about the operations people, man? What about them? You and I, once we're done with the code and the tests pass, we get to go home and sleep and hug our children and all that stuff. But those poor bums have to ca take that beeper home with them and sleep with it under their pillow like, like a gun, you know? They have to... They have to keep it. It's very important. They get nervous and they twitch and stuff. They need, they need security and peace of mind, knowing that things aren't going to go down at night at 2 in the morning, you know? Things can't go bump in the night. So the Caldecott Tunnel is a very good way for you to run your offline analytic scripts and your backup processes and your auditing and all that stuff uh, to make sure that those guys can sleep. That's, that's the main piece. Let them sleep. They need their sleep. Okay. Well, that was the uh, whistle stop tour. Uh, so right now, it's, during, it's in beta, the project is, cloudfoundry.com. And remember, cloudfoundry.com is a hosted platform as a service that uses the code from github.com forward slash cloudfoundry, right? There are all, many projects running Cloud Foundry. Some of them are already in production with GA supported indemnified releases. Um, we are moving a little slower over here at cloudfoundry.com. One of the things that we're in, going to be having, one of the things that the code will have uh, when we release it, let's see, oh boy, there's a, there's a blog on here, I'm, I'm struggling to find it, but basically uh, we support something called Teams in, the, in this new release coming up. Um, so you'll have support for that in the GA release by the end of the, end of the year, right? Uh, that, that gives you the ability to say, I've got an organization the organization has developers, and they have access to the shared resources and so on. So that specifically speaks to what you're looking for. The blog, um, oh boy, uh, the blog was in here. Mark Lukowski put it up just in a, it feels like a minute ago. It was like a minute ago, or maybe a month ago. It, I, I get, the days tend to blur together. But it was very, very recently, guys, very recently. And it supports exactly what you're looking for. So right now, yes, you would share credentials. That's not the ideal solution. So once we're, by, the, by the time we're out of GA, uh, out of beta, I mean, um, you'll have a real sort of legitimate solution for that specific organizational question. Okay? Okay, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's, I, I believe, hope, oh, please, please. I hope that I mentioned that. Yeah, there we are. Um, there's a there's a Maven plugin, a Grails plugin, a Spring Roo add-on, an Eclipse integration, and a uh, VMC command line tool. So yes, and they all do most of the things we've looked at. And of course, uh, by its very definition, by the very definition of having multiple clients, you have some sort of you have a little bit of a disconnect between supported features as we add new features to the core. But they tend to evolve pretty quickly since most of them are driven by uh, VMware. So for example. Um, it's interesting to know all of these things are actually just, in fact, clients to a RESTful API that you, you can use yourself if you want to drive and control Cloud Foundry, right? So if you want to program your cloud programmatically to implement things like auto-scaling, to implement things like smart clustering and so on and, and load balancing, you can. It's just a RESTful API. And in fact, there's a Java API that you can use for half of that. If you just want to ask it questions, we have a Java driver that talks to this RESTful API that gives you information about like how many, uh, how many services do I have and all that stuff. So all of these are just clients. They're just talking REST over, uh, 
over that over that service. Okay, yeah. The, the, the nice thing about the port portability uh, promise is you build an application on Cloud Foundry and you maybe deploy it to cloudfoundry.com. You decide tomorrow you want to deploy it locally in your own data center and you want to be able to manage it from there. Fine, no problem, same code, same everything. Uh, if you decide that you know, cloudfoundry.com is, you just, we, you just hate us. We're just not doing a good job for you and it, you, you think you can get something better from some of the other, other ecosystem providers, that's fine too, right? So that's a, a huge part of the open, sor the open story, right? Um, because it's open source also, if you want to run your own data center and add support for things, you can. So I, you know, I don't expect a lot of people are moving to Amazon. We do see some people who have Cloud Foundry applications handling the 90% the cases, and then maybe Amazon workloads for, you know, I, I can't even think of something, <laughs> but, but like S3, for example. Maybe you want to use S3 uh, for certain use cases. That's fine, right? Connect to it from a Cloud Foundry. Okay. Oh, I think that is uh, it, guys. That was it. Let me see. Hold on. There. Please take down my, uh, you know, email and information there. I'm actually on uh, Twitter at, let's see. This was totally not the same deck that I used in China. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Totally. Okay, yeah, so please feel free to reach out to me. That's my, those are my e email coordinates and my uh, Twitter handle. I'm more than happy to answer questions. Uh, and I'll be around the conference, of course. If you have questions, feel free to reach me and you know, be happy to talk. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the show.